Hello, everyone. We're just just starting. Really excited to have you here. We have about another minute or so before the webinar officially starts. Say hello to us in the chat. We'd love to know where you're from, where you're joining us from. Really excited to see everyone coming on. And don't mind me, I've got two screens. So when you see me turning my head all the time, I've got uh, all my controls on the other screen. Well, it's five o'clock. I know some people are still joining us, but five o'clock here on the East Coast. I know many of you are joining us from all over the country. It's a pleasure to have you all here today. I'm Ann Arnold, one of the founders of the Mark Schoenwetter Holocaust Education Foundation. I'm joined today by my sister, Isabella Fisk, and Mark Schoenwetter, our father, who we have named and honored this entire foundation after. And we'll get a chance to meet him a little bit later on as well. And so, I'm just going to interrupt you. Someone yes. in the Q&A says the chat is disabled, but the Q&A works. Can oh, you enable okay. the chat, please? I don't know why the chat is disabled. Thank you for that note, Cody. Um, that's a very good question. Oh, you know why? It's only the chat goes to us. I wonder, let's try the chat if that worked, what I just put in there now. If that still doesn't work, then while Isabella's talking, I'll play around or just use the Q&A and then that way we'll be able to answer all your questions. Q&A is a great way also to communicate with us because then we'll be able to monitor all the questions and make sure we get to all of you. So thank you for that as well. So, as I said, we're going to hop right into it. As we go along, if you do have any questions for anything we're bringing up today, please put it in the Q&A section and Isabel and I will be monitoring that and we will get to you as soon as possible. So, Isabella, if you want to say a few words. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, as my sister Anne introduced me, my name is Isabella Schoenwetter Fisk. I am one of the co-founders of the Mark Schoenwetter Holocaust Education Foundation. It is a pleasure to have you guys with us today. And it's really, we're thrilled to be able to tell you some of the stuff about our foundation and the great resources available to you teachers. Um, I'm gonna put in, um, let's see if it works. If I'm gonna put in the chat, a link that we would love for you guys to, it's a survey. And at your convenience, um, we would love for you to fill out the survey so we can know exactly who's here. Did that go to everyone or no? I, I see so. it. Let's Wait. hope that it went through. Um, so basically that um, is a Google doc. It will be easy. Just a couple seconds will take you to fill it out. And it's just basically giving us some information of who you are. The chat still isn't showing anything. No problem. And we're going to do it in the follow-up email. We'll send okay. you a link to that. So, and the link is actually, I think somewhere later on too. So um, Cody, you're going to be my like right-hand person in this with telling me what's working and what's not. So thank you so much. Um, so that is that. I am just to tell you a little bit about who is the Mark Schoen or what is the Mark Schoen Holocaust Education Foundation. We started this foundation in 2019, and um, basically um, under the passion that both Anne and I had, that we realized that there was a need out there for schools and teachers to receive grants. Anne, myself, and my father for years uh, went to schools, have gone into schools and spoke. My father is a public speaker and tells his story of survival through the Holocaust. And when we've been out and about and speaking, people will tell us, teachers would tell us that they didn't even have $250 to bring in a classroom set of books and that they would have to go to their local, um, you know, whether it was a local temple, whether, you know, even if they were a public school or, or to their PTA to be able to get some funds because budgets didn't allow for it. Ann and I have always wanted to do something um, to honor our father not to memorialize him, but to honor him. 
And we realized what better way but to start this foundation and to be able to raise funds to be able to offer grants to schools to be able to bring in the necessary resources like books, uh, like speakers, like, um, you know, programs. Um, so that's what we did in 2019. We've had three grant cycles since our inception. Um, our first grant cycle was opened up in January of 2020. We gave out our first set of grants in March of 2020, and then the world shut down. So you can understand how challenging it has been for us, but yet at the same time, a lot of the teachers through this platform that we're on right now, Zoom, have reconfigured and you guys were all spectacular, I'm sure, in your classrooms. You know, reinventing the wheel to be able to teach to our students. And we had actually, you know, the silver lining in a lot is we were able to get into more classrooms. Mark has spoken nationwide now because of Zoom and Google Meets. Um, so with all the bad still came some good that we were able to touch more lives. And we've actually now given out um, over $50,000. We've reached, um, oh God, and help me. Over 45,000 students, 45, nationwide. students nationwide. So we love having you here. Um, this is the, exactly the purpose is that we could speak to you, our teachers, and tell you what resources are available to you and what, um, we're here to help you and um, help you ensure that your education is going even further. So without further Thanks, ado, Paula. I'm gonna give it over to Anne again. So today, what we're gonna be going is, as we said, who the foundation is. We're gonna go over some resources that are available for you. Talk about our grants that we are having the grant cycles open currently. It closes October 7th. You'll get to meet Mark Schoenwetter. We'll talk about how to apply for a grant. And then we're gonna talk about the Journey for the Living Fitness Challenge, which is a great opportunity to really engage the students in physical fitness activity that also talks about history and learning about Holocaust awareness. So as Isabella said, our mission is to expand and support Holocaust education for students, and we provide those funds necessary. Our overall vision, which I know we're kind of pie in the sky, but we would love to create and inspire the students to create a world where all people are treated with equally and with kindness and respect. And that's what we hope that teaching about the past does. If you indulge for a few moments, indulge us, we're going to show a short video about the foundation so you get an idea of who we are and what we do. I feel that you can accomplish so much more with kindness, with love, than with hatred. The Mark Schoenwetter Holocaust Education Foundation was founded by Mark and his daughters, Anne Arnold and Isabella Fisk, with an intention to raise funds to allow schools across the country to apply for grants to purchase materials and fund programs necessary to enhance Holocaust curriculum. Mark survived the Holocaust as a young boy with his mother and sister in the forests of Poland as well as the homes of kind Polish people. Mark, along with his daughters, have been sharing his story of survival for many years to people of all ages. Unfortunately, I have to say that to a degree, people are not as much aware what was happening in those days. And that's one of the reasons that we go out and talk to kids. On their tours throughout the Northeast, they discovered that many schools lack funding for Holocaust education. So they established the foundation. Mark and his daughters have received countless letters from the students they visit, thanking them for sharing the experiences and lessons. To Mr. Schoenwetter, now and for the rest of my life, I will remember you as a genuine, kind-hearted man. I will never be able to describe in words how thankful I am for you coming to our school and giving us advice for our lives. I will remember your story, and I will tell your story. Our father Mark always says that if it weren't for the bravery of his mother and the goodness of others, he would not be here today. These righteous individuals had a choice and stood up to help save him and his family. We're asking you to now stand up as well. I am Anne Schoenwetter Arnold. And I'm Isabella Schoenwetter Fitz. We need your help. Your support can ensure that students will be educated about the past in order to make a change for the future. 
help us promote kindness and respect through Holocaust education. Please visit mshefoundation.org to make your donation today. Thank you. So that was a quick video on who we are. Again, that was something we created to obviously not for you guys for fun and stuff, but it does to give you a really great background on who and what we do. We're going to be going over some resources today. And as I mentioned, there is grant money available. So we hope that you will apply for a grant as well. So what are some of the resources that are available? Now, we have a list here. This is not all inclusive. There are many, many resources, and you may know some of them locally as well. But this is a list of some of the ones we're going to touch on. We are going to put this presentation and in a PDF, and we will send this out if you would like. You'll have an opportunity to email us, and we'll be able to send you this out. It has all the links that we're going to talk about so that when we send this presentation out, if you would like, you'll be able to capture all of those links as well. So we're going to start right away with the ADL. The Anti-Defamation League has a great a uh, resource of lesson plans, as well as books and children's literature on the Holocaust that you can go through. To get one of their programs, you simply go to their website. It's the adl.org. And under plan of training, you'll see some of their resources. Now, not only can you go to their website and request resources, they also are, they have as part of what they offer is called Echoes and Reflections. And Echoes and Reflections is a professional development for teachers platform. It is completely free. So you do not have to pay for it. It has a lot of resources for middle and high school educators. And it gives you a lot of materials as well as they have webinars, live programs, online classes. They really are a great resource to help you develop that curriculum and give you ideas for content. As I mentioned, they have lesson plans, timelines, really good questions and answers for the students, a video toolbox. So I encourage you to not only go to the ADL website, but look up Echoes and Reflections as well. They're going to have a lot of resources that you'll be able to incorporate in the classroom. Again, if you would like to look for any of their professional development programs, it's echoesandreflections.org, and you go to request a training. Um, I'm just going to interrupt you for one second. Yes. There's a couple questions in the chat. Sure. Um, we will be sharing this um, PowerPoint with you all um, in a PDF format. So if you don't want to take notes and everything, you will be getting this entire um, presentation. So if you want to just listen and take side notes, but this information you will be getting via email after we're done. Um, also, someone said they don't have a Google um, email, so they can't fill out the survey. Totally understand. No worries. If you want to just email us, really the survey is asking a couple of quick questions of basically your name, the school you're with, the grade level that you teach, uh, if you're a teacher or if you're an administrator or a principal, um, and how did you hear of us? So those are a few questions that we'll send you maybe on the side also in a future email, um, but not to worry at all. So thank you. Continuing, I'm sorry. No problem. Please let the questions come. That's what we're here for. So the next, and many of you probably know and have heard of the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum. It's in Washington, DC. For those that are, when I say local, many East Coast uh, schools do head to Washington, DC to go visit the museum. But if you don't have the ability to visit the museum, they also have a lot of resources for you. They've got materials on the fundamentals, online teaching resources, you can get videos and poster sets. I encourage you to explore their online tools as well. And if you want any of their hard copies of their teaching materials or to contact the museum, we're providing you those links as well. Now, if you are 
in an area that is local to a museum. And we're going to go over a few more uh, shortly. But if you are in an area that you would like to take your students on some sort of field trip, a local museum, or to go see, I know sometimes uh, some people have even put in grants because they've been plays, like the Anne Frank play was nearby, and they wanted to see it live. Yes, that was before COVID. So again, I don't know what your school's policy is on field trips, but we will supplement transportation costs. Our grants are capped at $1,000, but you can apply for a grant to help cover some of the transportation or admission costs to museums. So sometimes some of these museums may even have online fees for you to get links. That's the type of stuff that you'll be able to apply for grants for so that you can attend or utilize some of their resources. The Anne Frank Center is another great opportunity to look at teaching from a different perspective. So we've all heard of Anne Frank. Many schools use the Anne Frank Diary as part of their curriculum. The Anne Frank Center not only has traveling exhibits, but their theatrical productions and performances are really cool. And they have moved to more of an online platform that you can utilize, although they do come in. What's really great is they've got two specific programs or performances that they do. One is Anne Frank herself, a reenactment of Anne Frank kind of doing her diary. But there's another one where it's Anne Frank and Dr. Martin Luther King speaking and kind of showing the similarities. They were actually both born in the exact same year. They might have been, I think it was the same year that they were born. And it talks about how each one of them and their trajectories of their life and it's really cool. It's just a different way and perspective of doing things. Again, we are going to provide you the link. We did have a webinar with the Anne Frank Center, and you're more than welcome to watch that webinar. They talk much more in depth about their programs and what they have available. You can also reach out directly to them to request a program. Uh, Isabella, I'll let you take it from here for a moment. Isabella, you're muted. Yep, yep. So thank you. So I see Cody, my friend, is telling us that a lot of their local museums, he's in Michigan, um, do cover transportation costs and admission fees to the museum. Um, he knows that the Zeckelman Holocaust Center in Michigan will cover the travel costs, which is incredible. And I'd love to hear that. So, you know, you could use them for those um, expenses. And then if you need to maybe bring in supplemental, um, you know, books or curriculum into your schools, apply to us um, for funding elsewhere for, you know, textbooks to support the visits that you maybe make to the museum. So it's a great way to um, tap into multiple areas of getting funding. Um, the Holocaust Council of Jewish Federation of Greater Metro West is another um, resource available to everybody. So even though um, the Greater Metro West is located here in New Jersey and, and serves um, certain area of the northern part of New Jersey, even if you're outside of this area, you can still utilize them for certain um, programs that they offer. Um, if you're local to a survivor, that's something that a teenage um, child can um, um, actually sit down with the survivor one-on-one -on -one and interview that survivor and learn about their history and basically become their voice of their future to be able to continue to tell the story as well as uh, um, adopt a survivor is a very similar concept to that. Um, Survivor Speaks, basically we go in, they have different survivors that you can ask and they can come into your schools, both via um, in-person or Zoom or Google Meets. And a survivor can come and speak to your school and tell their story. Mark has done that many, many times through, not only through Federation of Greater Metro West, but you'll hear about the Jewish Heritage Museum later. He's worked with them as well and spoken to them as, and he's on their speakers bureau as well. So um, it's a great um, opportunity to, if you wanted to reach out, but not only, and you could go to the next slide, um, not only the Greater Metro West Federation, but you might have a Jewish Federation in your area. Call them. I am sure that they have programs available to you as well, similar to the programs that we offer here at the Metro West area. 
um, utilize those federations and see what resources they have as well. Um, our federation takes you to um, museum trips. There is a trip that takes you down to Washington, DC, a full bus day trip. Um, we've done that, Mark and I have both um, been on the bus with um, some students. It's a full bus, full day. We leave at six in the morning. We don't come back till about 11 at night. And it's a full, amazing day um, with the students as a bus trip down to the Washington, DC you know, um, Holocaust Museum. And then they also have something like a tour of the Holocaust um, and Frank house as well. And you can continue going in. And then um, this is their contact information. If you do want to speak to the director of their Holocaust education program, you could speak to Elise Shane Brown or Jamie Harris for programming. And um, they can help you as well, um, maybe find resources in your area as well if there's a federation closer to you to help you out. Next, we're gonna talk about the Simon Wiesenthal Center. The Simon Wiesenthal Center um, is connected to the Museum of Tolerance in Los Angeles. Um, and Simon Wiesenthal himself was a survivor and they created the center to combat hate and um, they have a program called Combat Hate and Digital Hate Programs. It's a really great program. You can contact them and basically what their combat hate program talks about, it's probably more geared, I would say, to upper middle school to high school age kids. And the program utilizes a lot about social media and how social media affects kids today and what social media platforms are out there and how there's a lot that are out there that kids think are maybe just gaming sites. Um, but they're actually promoting hate within these gaming sites in a subtle way. And it teaches your students how to recognize that sometimes it's not just a fun game, but there's hate messages involved in it that they should be aware of and maybe make a statement about. Also other social media platforms that are out there um, and they discuss those types of platforms as well in the social media world that we are now living in and our students are very, very involved in. And it talks about bullying and it talks about um, words that can affect kids. So it's a, it's a great, great program. Um, you can speak to Emily Thompson, um, who is in charge of the Combat Hate Program, or Michael Cohen, who is here in New York. He's based out of the East Coast and Emily's actually based out of the West. Um, so those are some couple great programs as well. Isabella, don't they also have like this app that they kids can download and by uh, anonymously they can submit when people are bullying yes. or doing something online. So it's a great opportunity. Like some kids, they don't want to say anything because they're afraid. And there's this app that allows you to set it up where it could be completely anonymous and kids can post things or post things from social media so that nobody says anything. Absolutely. Yes, they do. And they have a lot of um, other, besides their app, they have other um, um, sources that they could, you could tell your students if they feel something to say something in an anonymous way. Correct. Great. Okay. Um, Alexandra wrote, okay to say, I'm sorry, I'm not sure if that was a question or if that was a comment, Alexandra. So just give us a little more information on that. Sorry. So moving on, the Illinois Holocaust Museum and Education Center also has some great resources. And not only they, before the pandemic, they had these teaching trunks where they would send these trunks into these classrooms and they have lots of different replicas and artifacts and DVDs. And it gave you a lot of information that you could use. Now with the pandemic, they've also gone to the virtual teaching trunks. And the virtual teaching trunks offer accessibility and flexibility so you can have that online. Uh, I'm gonna pause for a second. Alexandra, thank you so much. The anonymous reporting website is okay to say. So okay, the number two, and then S-A-Y. So just wanted to let you all know that. Thank you very much, Alexandra. Isabella just put that in the chat. So the Illinois Holocaust Museum also did a webinar with us previously where they talk about all the different opportunities that they have and all of the materials that they have. So you can very easily watch that 
back and get some more information. The virtual teaching trunks were a really cool opportunity for you to be able to bring something into the classroom. And again, all done online. Jessica is the assistant manager of education there, and she could definitely help you with more information. And again, their website has some really, really good contacts and information there. We recently also spoke with Kennesaw State University in Georgia. They have a Museum of History and Holocaust Education. You can do a virtual tour of their museum as well, which was really cool, as well as they have a lot of K through 12 education that is available to you. Again, their website had a lot of information and Andrea is the education manager and can give you some more information on the opportunities and different materials that they have. For those that are, again, are on the East Coast, you may have heard of the Museum of Jewish Heritage. They have a lot of curriculum lesson plans and virtual classrooms. They do have opportunities for you to go and visit the museum. They change out their exhibits all the time. They provide speakers for those that are local. And again, a lot, my dad does a lot of speaking with them as well. So you can always get in touch with the Museum of Jewish Heritage and they can schedule a survivor to speak via Zoom as well. Dad, I believe you do a lot of yours via Zoom now with the Jewish Heritage, right? Exactly, I do a lot of speaking with, through them. Yes. So again, they're a great resource. If you are looking for a Holocaust survivor, they have access to a bunch of different ones as well. A really cool project that was brought up to our attention, actually through our grants, we saw many coming up with the Butterfly Project. And it uses art in education. It allowed you buy these kits and the kids uh, paint them in their ceramics and they share personal stories. It's really, really, we thought a really interesting and different way to teach about the Holocaust. It's a great way, especially for the younger students. If you're teaching in those fourth, fifth grade classrooms, I mean, people, they use this K through 12. If you go on their website, they do say that this is good for K through 12. We found that with some of the younger students, it's a great way to be creative through art and teach the Holocaust in a meaningful way. Some other resources just to let you know about is Voices of Hope. It is part of the University of Hartford in Connecticut. They have the Holocaust Education and Resource Outreach. It's the Hero Center. And they have, again, different opportunities for you to look at. Classrooms Without Borders, this is a travel seminar, and they take teachers overseas, usually in the summer and spring after school, and you go to Europe and you learn about the Holocaust in real time by going overseas. So Classrooms Without Borders is a great professional development if you have the ability to travel a little bit. And I believe they restarted their trips. I think it was this year. They were trying for last year, but they, again, great resource. Open Door Media is a media company that has a whole video series about the Holocaust that they just launched. So again, different ways for you to find resources to bring into the classroom. So again, our grant money can be used if any, now many of the resources we spoke about, and as we saw that Zeckelman Holocaust Center, they provide some money as well. So a lot of times these places that you want to go to may be free, but then you want to bring things into the classroom. So some examples of what you can use the grant money for is bringing new books into the classroom, learning through art and photography. We one time had a class that needed photography and they were creating this whole visual display. Creation of genocide resource centers. I have librarians that will apply for grants and create an entire resource center in the library. As we mentioned before, field trips, this can help subsidize the cost of transportation. Sometimes virtual tours do have some sort of fee associated with it. Not as many, but sometimes they do. Survivor speak assemblies. You could do programs for the entire school or just for your classroom, author visits, and then any other kind of information and things that you would like to come up with. 
So this is the Jersey City program that I wanted to tell you guys about. It was a great thing, a great idea. Um, teacher Rachel Botnick, who um, works in the inner city of Jersey City with eighth grade students. She was a grant recipient this past year and she purchased um, Anne's book actually. Anne wrote a book in 2016 about our father's survival and it's called um, um, Together, A Journey for Survival. And she used her, her grant money to purchase those books. And with that book also comes curriculum if you'd like to have it, which is free. Um, but what Rachel oh, did was a little different and it was, it, it, it touched me and I hadn't seen anything like this yet. And it was quite powerful, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> what she did was when she got the books, she gave them to all the students. And instead of just making the student read it and come back and talk about it in a day, she read the books with the student line by line, chapter by chapter. And she would stop and talk to the kids and they would ask questions about what was happening. And she happened to have been a Jewish teacher. So she had understanding of some of the history behind what is, what does it mean to be kosher? You know, why couldn't he eat that kind of food? Or, you know, what, what is the Sabbath and things like that. Um, so she was able to help, you know, explain some of those things. And once they read the book and they were finished with the book, she had the students go and basically do a project. Um, they could choose anything they wanted. They can choose any subject matter that had to do with the Holocaust or hate. And some students did book reports, some students did art projects, and um, some of the book reports were just about concentration camps and the history of a concentration camp. One child, which was very impressive, did the um, rise of Hitler, which my son, who's now a junior in University of Miami, actually took a semester course about the rise of Hitler. So to see an eighth grader, right, and it was very impressive about that um, was, uh, I mean, again, speechless. Um, and then some kids did art projects and they connected how Black Lives Matter connected to the Holocaust. Other kids did modules um, of Legos of a concentration camp and what a concentration camp looked like. It was just phenomenal. It, and then we came in and um, my father spoke told his story. And basically all these projects was a living museum. And we walked in and we walked through their museum of their projects. And we said, you know, we met every single child and it was so emotional and so powerful because these kids never heard of the Holocaust before. And it was an amazing way that it really touched them and it's going to sit with them forever. And it was quite powerful. So, you know, not only just to take the book and read the book and then to move on, she took it a step further by creating, you know, the education on the, the literature, but then also education through art and creativity, and then a museum that we came in and followed it up with the speak, um, with my father speaking. So that's an idea. If you want more information on that, we can give it to you. That was just another great idea that a student took um, creatively on their own, a, a teacher, excuse me. So that was the Jersey City program. Thanks. Um, and then um, I just want to say also, again, you can use these grant money for any resources. We are giving you some ideas of resources, but there's so many more resources out there. And if you guys know of some, please let us know and, you know, you can utilize it and go forward with that information as well. Um, Corey, again, my, my friend is Cody is saying the Auschwitz-Birkenau Memorial Foundation also has funds for trips. So you could visit Auschwitz and um, trips to Poland. Yes, they do. So thank you for that. Great. Um, go ahead, Ann. Thanks. So as Isabella mentioned, I did write a book about Mark Schoenwetter. Now, again, it is not a requirement to buy this book. We're just letting you know about it. Mark is available to speak, and we do speak via Zoom, Google Meet, all of that. With the book, if you would like, we have free curriculum content that's available, as well as we've created a PowerPoint PDF that accompanies a book of what happened after the war. I know a lot of students sometimes read books and they're like, 
well, what happened to them? Where'd they go? What it is? So we we kind of did a really cute little what happens next kind of PowerPoint. And then we have sample questions and answers where teachers that have used the book have submitted back to me, hey, these were some great questions and some great answers that I got. And so that way you can utilize that in the classroom as well. Dad, why don't I give you a few minutes to speak to everybody and just say hello. Thank you, and Thank you, Isabella. Let me just say hello to everybody. I'm so happy that you join us today for the webinar. It shows only that we are trying to remember what happened in the past. And we try to teach all the kids and even the adults to keep in their mind that what happened in the past will never happen again in the future. Well, as a Holocaust survivor, I do, pre, I do speak to kids, to adults, and I am available. And it would be my pleasure and honor if you, pre, <laughs> if you invite me and I can do it either way, or through Zoom, or if you already let people come in, I would be more than happy to go and speak in person to the kids. So don't be bashful. Think about that. And maybe we can meet one day and soon. The sooner is better. <laughs> because you know, Holocaust survivors are not kids anymore. And they're coming to an age that Unfortunately, one day have to go. So take advantage. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much again. And I appreciate you being here. And thanks for all the education you're giving to the young generation. Thanks again. Thanks, Dad. So again, get in touch with us if you'd like any more information on that. So another question was, do the grant funds specifically have to be used for Holocaust education and awareness or projects that fight hate? Or may the funds be used for other projects or materials for the classrooms? So we specifically concentrate on Holocaust education and awareness. Our goal is to teach the lessons of the past and how they apply to today. So we're looking for some sort of Holocaust education in there. However, tying that to current events and tying that into what's happening today is totally fine. Again, that's the purpose is to try to show kids that this didn't just happen, you know, 80, 70, 80 years ago, but this is something that's very relevant today as well. So I hope that that answered your question. So as I mentioned, and we were just talking about the grant opportunities, our grant portal is now open. We are accepting applications through October 7th. When you visit our website, go to our grants page and scroll down and you'll see the apply now button. So another really exciting opportunity is our journey for the living. Now, journey for the living, and I'm gonna, show you a video in a moment is a great opportunity for the class to start getting involved and basically walking in the footsteps of Mark. So bear with us for a moment and we're gonna watch a short video so you can learn a little bit more about Journey for the Living. Father, Mark Schoenwitter, fled his childhood home in Poland to escape the Nazis during World War II. With his mother and sister, they walked 15 miles to the ghetto where they thought they would be safer. Because of that decision and the help of some righteous Polish families, our father, grandmother, and aunt survived the war. And today, our father is spreading the message of kindness and respect. We invite you to walk in our father's footsteps as part of the journey for the living. During the month of November, join us by walking, running, or biking 15 miles to help raise money and awareness for Holocaust education. For more information, scan the QR code or visit 
mshefoundation.org forward slash journey for the living. Together we can inspire students to create a world where all people are treated equally and with kindness and respect. So what's really exciting, so this journey for the living, obviously it is a fundraiser for us, for our foundation. However, we have made a separate Lot, a separate section, let's call it, for schools. We launched this last year, and in our inaugural year, we had several schools that participated, and they got their classes to walk the 15 miles during the month of November. Now, some schools did it where every day at lunch, they would go and get together and walk. They had tracks or things like that. The platform itself, where the students register, has a virtual map so they could see how far they're going. There's a really cool, they, they could download an app. And so that app links with any of their fitness trackers, whether it's an iWatch or a Fitbit or their phone that has, I think the Apple phone has the heart icon or the health icon or their droid. So it interfaces with all of the different fitness apps. So as the kids are doing fitness throughout the day or throughout the weeks, it'll track how many miles they walk. And the goal is to walk as many as you can, many miles as you can, with, of course, 15 miles being the target. And so imagine you're a teacher and, you know, you're teaching about the Holocaust. And now all of a sudden it's taking these kids, you know, maybe it's five days or maybe it's the entire month to walk 15 miles. And then you're like, well, now imagine these people, this kid did this in one night running, escaping Nazis with the clothes on his back, terrified, not knowing what's going to happen to him. And we think that it's really powerful. We got some great pictures and feedback last year from the schools that did participate. There is a registration fee, but if you would like to participate with your school, just contact us and we will give you the discount code. And it is free for schools and for students. So there's no worries. There's no need to fundraise. We hope that the adults in the room will fundraise, the ones that we get in touch with. But for you in your classrooms, the goal here is to give the students an opportunity to learn about the Holocaust, but in a different way. And so we hope that you will join us in the month of November and take the journey and take the walk with us. Last year, again, because we have the fitness trackers and everyone logs their miles, in our inaugural year, we walked 8,000 miles collectively as a group for everyone that registered. And we really hope to be able to more than double that this year. So we're hoping that you'll encourage your classrooms. You can create teams. So you can either create one team for your school. If you have different classes in the school, it's a friendly competition. And we saw that last year where people were really competing with each other, trying to walk more, but your entire team. So you can have two or three classes and each class can create their own team. And you can have some kind of friendly competitions as well, who can walk the most amount of miles. Again, lots of fun ways that you can incorporate fun without that sounding too silly that we're putting fun and Holocaust in the same sentence, but some really different ways we hope for you to really be able to teach about the Holocaust, but in a way that they will get an impact and remember a bit for it. So, that, I believe there's any other questions. I think really we're at questions now. We want to thank you so much for attending. I hope we've given you a little bit of information that maybe you didn't know about before or some new information that you could bring back to your classrooms. I see here that um, we all have heard about the, I don't know if we all, but I know I've heard about the Ken Burns documentary that just came out on PBS. It's about the U.S. and the Holocaust, and it is available to stream via the PBS app or website. Thank you, Cody. Cody also put in the chat about a cookbook of recipes of Holocaust survivors. I have seen that. It's pretty interesting. You have the recipe and then the story of the survivor right next to it. So it's very, very interesting. Um, let me just make sure... If there's any other questions, I don't believe there are any other questions. Please know you will get an email after this and we will either put a link to this presentation in there or you'll get a second email that's specifically with this presentation there. We just have to see 
the technology and how it works. We will be posting a link to this, so you'll be able to rewatch it at any time and be able to hopefully get that information. If you missed anything, get it again. Um, as far as a contact person in Michigan, Isabella and I are available. We are available at info, I-N-F-O, at M-S-H-E foundation.org. You can contact us at any time. As, as Isabella mentioned, we're pretty new on the scene. We launched at the end of 2019. So this is Isabella and I's passion project. We have some great volunteers that work with us. We're always looking to expand our volunteer base. So if any of you are really passionate and want to help us out, we're more than, wel more than welcome to get in touch with us. We're always looking for people to help us spread the message and to help further what we're trying to and if do. If you think of something later, just, you know, email us. Um, if, you know, we'd be more than happy to be in touch with you and try to find you or connect you to someone within your state, um, specifically if you do need that. But again, we are nationwide. Um, and so, you know, we can, you know, try to contact you throughout. Um, Susan puts in the chat, the Sperling Kronberg Mac Holocaust Resource Center um, is hosting a meet at the author virtual program. Contact Susan, nine authors speaking on books of the Holocaust. Wonderful. Thank you for that information. Um, so again, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day because we know that you are very busy, um, but taking the time to meet with us and to hear about our foundation and the resources available to you as teachers and the grants that we can offer to you. And we hope that we can work together um, in the future and continue to educate our students for a better future. So thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. And we hope to see you soon. Take Bye. care.